Hi. Welcome back to Chronically Authentic, the podcast. We have some crush your goal cards that we're going to kick things off with today. So let's get to it. The question of your worthiness is not on the table at all. You know what you want, embrace that, and stand up for it without huffing the spray paint that everyone else is huffing. What's that mean to you? <laughs> I like how they said huffing the spray paint. They couldn't think of any other analogy but that. What does that mean to me? The question of your worthiness is not on the table. You, your worth is not for anyone else to decide. Mm. That's for you to decide. And you are the only person who knows what you want. And the only person who's ever going to fight for that as hard or as strong or as intense or whatever is going to be you. Mm -hmm. We were just having that conversation with a friend today about how some of the people that you've known the shortest amount of time are your biggest champions and clap the loudest for you when compared to people who you've known your whole life. Or claim to be your friends. Yeah. Okay, you read yours. All right. Do whatever you have to do. People always want to tell you how to do it. No. Do it your way. And don't ask for like, oh, how can you do it? Do it. Figure it out. Cardi B. Cardi B said that. Facts. No matter what you're doing, it's probably already been done, but it's been yeah. done someone else's way. And in, the world wants to see your way of doing it. They don't need a carbon copy of the last person that did it. We've already seen that. So if you're making music like Cardi B, or if you're putting out content, or if you're coaching people in fitness, do it your way. Tell them what's worked for you or what you're passionate about, because people want to experience your twist on it, not somebody else's. It's really kind of funny because the last couple of days have really been in my Instagram stories, really leaning into conversations, talking about the stories that we tell ourselves that stop us from taking action, that move us closer to the things that we want out of our own life. And whether that be huffing the spray paint that everyone else is huffing, be it their negativity or somebody else's limiting belief over you. That's like something for me. I was talking about how growing up as a kid, I constantly heard the people that were supposed to be championing me and like cheering me on, telling me you're not good enough. The hell I'm not. Maybe they weren't good enough. Yeah. But as a kid, I heard it so often that I, their limiting beliefs over me prohibited me one because I was a kid and kind of needed my parents to carve me around places, mm -hmm. but they literally stopped me from going after big goals. And I don't think I've ever really told this story publicly outside of like to Matt. Here we go. <laughs> if you know the story, I'm about to talk. Yeah. What? Is, is it the one about you um, doing the fashion thing or like the show? Yeah. Yeah. So when I was probably, I was in middle school, so maybe 12, maybe 13. Um, I grew up in Gainesville, Florida, right? And uh, you know, you would hear radio commercials come on of like Barbizon models, Barbizan, however you want to pronounce that, Barbizon models looking for new talent. Um, whether it was acting or modeling or whatever, they wanted you to come and audition. And so I begged my mom to take me. And she did. She, she relented at some point and she ended up taking me. And guess what? I got picked for a callback. And I went back and it, it got to the point where they were ready to send me to New York to start my career, my journey, putting me in front of stuff. And then my mom just pulled the rug out from under me. And to this day, I always wonder when I think about this, it's like this kind of part of my life, I always wonder why would you even let it get to that point? One, if you were my mom, like, what was the point of that? But two, the reason was that it was either about, I can't do that. It was always based off of what my mom couldn't do, which then translated into what I wasn't good enough to do and how those people, the representatives from Barbizon were just lying to me and, you know, would make me feel less than because 
of her own inadequacy. Are you okay? Are you getting mad? Are, are you feeling was, mad? <laughs> are you feeling sad? Yeah, it does make me mad, but I'll let you continue. Well, it made me mad too. And so like that was just one instance of many times where I had a really big vision dream and I let somebody else pull that rug out from under me and literally believed the story that they were telling me, which when you hear a story so many times, mm -hmm. you start telling yourself that same story, which is exactly what I did at, you know, 12, 13 years old. I'm not good enough. We don't have enough money. They're lying to me. I don't have what it takes. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, anyway, I've been on my stories talking about that this week, the stories that I would tell myself that would stop me from doing things. And uh, for example, one of the things that is great that happened for me recently is I applied to work with a brand called Paragon Fitwear, and they are my favorite. After I had my surgery, <laughs> after I had my surgery, I was really lacking in the self-confidence department, especially when it came to my body. And Paragon was actually one of the first brands that I wore that I actually felt really confident in coming out of that. And long story short, they are amazing. And so I emailed how you apply to work with them as you email their brand on why you think you would be a good fit for their brand. And so I literally told that story. I told the story about how I went through the hardest time of my life. I lacked so much self-confidence, but their brand made me feel that confidence. And I would be honored to help share that feeling that they gave me with my community and the people who may come across my content on social media. And like a week went by and I started to get that like, that feeling of, all right, maybe my mom was right, but I stopped it there. I didn't allow to be like, she's right. I stopped it and said, no, I deserve this. I'm good enough. And I think about a week and a half later, I got an email back. Um, that basically said, yeah, we want to work with you. And they sent me a couple of items. They had a launch happen, which I sold a lot of stuff because I just love this brand and talking about them comes natural. Um, and then about a week or so later, I don't even know what I was doing or where I was. I think I may have been getting my nails done. Mm -hmm. And I opened my email and I have an email from um, Shopify that Paragon has gifted me some items. And so I open it totally unaware of what was happening. I open it and it was, um, I could go in and pick items from their new collection, which drops March 7th called Candyland. And I immediately screenshot the email and sent it to Matt mm -hmm. freaking out because like, I don't know why, but I have this thing and this may be probably so relatable that when, especially if you've gone through a life of like just bad things happening all the time, that when something good happens, you don't believe it. <laughs> so even though like they said, yeah, we'll work with you, we'll send you some stuff and yada, yada, it, it didn't really sink in until I got the, the collab info for their next launch. And then it, it literally hit me like, Someone threw a soup can at me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not the soup can. It's for my family. <laughs> anyway, I it hit me then. And I remember sending you a screenshot of the email and like was just so happy. I was so proud of myself. I was so happy. But the story I told myself for two years was that I wasn't good enough to work with Paragon. And somewhere along the way, I had to flip that script mm -hmm. and stop huffing the paint that, you know, they were huffing over there. And, you know, through personal development, take care of myself. Like I really have started leaning into the, I am good enough and I do deserve this. And, you know, with the conversation that we were having with a friend, you know, over the last couple of days was that when these good things happen, Paragon eventually, now that I got the collection in, 
has, you know, posted me to their page and like that was completely unexpected. Which we're sitting at the nail salon again. Okay. I think we need to just hang out at the nail salon because all the all good the things, good, happen, all good things up happen up there. When you get your nails done. And then she refreshes her feed on her phone or she opens the home screen and she is the very first thing on the feed that pops up on Paragon Fitwear's Instagram reels that they had posted. And we just look at each other like, uh, is this real life? And I told her last night because we went out for celebratory ice cream at Cold Stone. I said, where we were two years ago and where we are now is complete night and day. And I'm just so proud of you for all of the progress that you've made for shooting your shot every day and for putting yourself out there. Like it's truly inspiring and you deserve this. So that's why we went out and celebrated, but it's so true. Like, and you deserve it too. You deserve to have nice things. You deserve to put yourselves out there and have yourself be known. And it's inspiring to other people. I'm just so proud of you, honey. It, it is inspiring to other people. But that's not even the point of all of this is like, yeah, it's great and good things happen. And I'm very proud of myself. But for some reason, I got hung up on why aren't the people in my circle happy for me in this moment of my celebration? And while we were having our celebratory ice cream, that was the conversation we were having. And that was something like that I kept asking myself out loud in some form of reflection. Like, why do I feel like I need someone else's congratulations to feel good about a win that I'm already having? Well, you know, kind of goes back to the Barbizon thing. Mm. That's why that there it is. That's the answer. Yeah. End of discussion. Goodbye. Podcast over. Sometimes it's as simple as that. Sometimes, Sometimes it really is. Yeah. Um, and so today I was talking to my friend who's going through a very similar thing that the people closest to you are the ones who stay the most silent sometimes. And I read an article last night while I was trying to kind of process through these feelings of why that is. And, you know, one of the biggest things was they don't feel like you deserve it, mm -hmm. that they think they could do it better than you, that it's as simple as just pure jealousy. What is the quote that we saw today or last night that said, you're looking for people to care when they don't care about you? What was that quote that we saw? Oh, oh, Darren Rio said it. Oh, I, I don't know, but I will gladly stop. It's very fitting for it this. It really is. You know when you have a topic on your brain or something that you talk about with your significant other that it's just like the theme of the day or for a couple of days and you can't help but see it everywhere once you start talking about it? And so we saw a friend post about it today where he was talking about people championing him. We see Darren Rios post a quote about it. We pull these cards that talk about it. It becomes the theme of the day and you can't do anything but speak on it because it's reality yeah yeah okay i found it i'm gonna play it i just heard this quote and it's pretty wild it's pretty true you know why you feel betrayed most of us is because we share things with people we love not people who love us yikes it also just goes to show you you're not the only person that's experiencing this. We are not the only people that are having this conversation or feeling this way. It's happening to a lot of people. And when you put yourself out there, no one feels these things except for people who put themselves out there. If you're not really doing anything, you're not moving the needle, you're not trying to make progress in a certain area, whether that be work, business, pleasure. If you're not trying to move the needle, you may not feel these things because ultimately, what are you putting out? But I bet a lot of people feel this in their friend groups and a lot of people feel this from their families and a lot of people feel this from their spouses or significant others. Where's your champion? How are we championing each other and helping each other out? Where's our friend groups that are supporting us? And if you're feeling down and you're feeling like those things aren't happening, what personal development or work can you do so that you don't need that? Yeah. Also, I'm going to tell you what I told my friend earlier. I don't, we don't nobody needs their anything to go after and feel proud of the things that you're doing you have to learn how to celebrate yourself the reason i put so much weight on maybe we'll call it needing approval from other people well we know why 
I started this entire episode of this podcast telling you why. Because I had an opportunity for a really big dream and the person who was supposed to put me on that pedestal and make sure the limelight was on me, stole it out from under my feet and told me you're not good enough. And I had the audacity to believe her. Can I sidebar this real quick and just say as well, you may have been kept down momentarily, but I honestly believe that the reason why all of these things are happening now is, be is because you can't keep somebody down forever. Now that might've happened when you were a teenager, but ultimately it's what you were meant for. And it may not have happened that way. It may not happen this way, but it will happen. And there are things out there that are going to happen for you if they're meant to happen. And there's only so long that other people can keep you down or your limiting self beliefs will keep you there. Ultimately, if it's meant to be, it's going to be. And all these years later, it's just coming to fruition in a different way. You know what I mean? Yeah, but also no. Because the only reason that it's happening now is because I had to become aware that I was the reason that I was that I was actually allowing that story mm. to be my story instead of flipping the script and rewriting it all together. And I'm not perfect. Like I'm not perfect. I still trip up and I still you know, go back into old ways of thinking, but I've learned, and this was something that Matt was saying to me this morning, how to sit in it, reflect on it, go to bed, wake up. It's behind me. I leave things where they are in the past. I don't go back and deal with it. I don't turn around to dwell on it. I move on. And yeah, maybe I'll bring up things like my mom and the barbers on thing to prove a point or to make a point. But I don't harp on it. I don't get angry about it anymore. I'm not going to sit here and cry about it. It is what it is. What am I and what are you going to do to go forward and do better? That's the point. We can point fingers all we want, but the only finger I'm pointing is at myself because it's on me. It's always been on me. You know, we always like when we were kids, we didn't have control over that stuff. We kind of just had to fall in line and go about the day and do what we had to do to survive. At least I did. I had to survive my childhood and thankfully that I did. Like, I'm so grateful that I survived my childhood. Mm -hmm. I'm so grateful for that. But once you become an adult, and this is also something personally that I really struggled with was realizing, oh shit, I'm an adult. And I don't have to be scared of what that person has to say about what I'm doing. I'm not going to get in trouble. I'm not breaking the law. Mm -hmm. I'm not breaking the law. I'm not intentionally doing anything to hurt someone's feelings. I'm simply living my life in a way that is best for me, my dreams and my goals. And every single day I'm doing what I'm supposed to do per my decisions and my goals that align with me. I'm out there doing it. You know what I'm Cardi B would say? figuring it out. Do it. Yeah. Shia LaBeouf would also say that. He would, well, he would scream <laughs> that. I'm not going to do it again. We did. We already been there in an episode. But the point is, is that you can't let their silence dictate your mood, your next move, your inaction. You have to just keep on keeping on. Yeah. And that's literally what I have taken away from our conversation celebrating this huge win for me. Like right now in my bubble, because it's my life I live in, right? Yeah. That's a huge win for me. Big shit popping. Sure. But how many times have you let someone who didn't express their gratitude or their congratulations or their approval stop you from continuing towards that thing? How have you, how many times have you let that happen? Countless amount of times. And I'll be honest, while we've been sitting here, I kind of was reminded of this time where years ago I put in a package to be an officer in the Navy. I remember that. And I really wanted this goal to be an, an intelligence officer in the Navy. And I was sailor of the year that year. Like I had everything set up for me to do it. 
because I didn't get picked up the first time, I started having doubts about myself and doubts about my ability to do it and continue on. And I never reapplied. And now I'm the sort of person that believes in fate. And I believe that everybody has a certain path and that things will happen when they happen um, for a reason. But sometimes I do think about what if I had continued on because I, I deserved that and was hardworking and smart. And if I had continued on where I would be right now. Now, we may not be moving to Hawaii. I may not be flying on a plane that I you know, enjoy flying on and operating. So I try not to dwell on those things, but you got to remember that you are worth it. You are smart enough. You are capable enough. And if there's something that you want, you should not give up on those things. And we learn lessons throughout life when we give up on things and feel bad about those things, but you have to let those go and continue on. But if you're in a situation now where you're faced with something similar, reapply. If you reached out to a brand and you want to work with them and they said no the first time, revisit that next month or six months from now and be your true authentic self and just keep going. Do it because you are good enough for it. Figure it out. Figure it out. I also used to be the kind of person who would let a no, like literally be the be all end all. Mm -hmm. I was literally having a conversation with a girl yesterday about pretty much the same thing about how she you know, doesn't have the necessary credentials as far as education goes. So she feels like she wouldn't be, um, I think it was like marketing that she wanted to get into. And I was like, listen, I get that. It's easy to think that because you didn't go to school for that, that they're going to tell you no. But like at the end of the day, if I've learned anything, like I always say, it's to just do it. And worst case, you can go into it knowing the worst case scenario, they're going to say no. That's it. But the best case is that they say yes, but you don't give them the opportunity to give you that yes if you just assume it's a no. Do you know the famous Wayne Gretzky <laughs> quote? Who? You miss. Moment of silence for that. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Who? <laughs> Stop. I'm not even kidding. You don't know who Wayne Gretzky is. He's the most famous hockey player of all time. Do I look like a girl who watches hockey? Anyway, the quote still stands. <laughs> if you never take that shot, you're Hold guaranteed. Hold on. <laughs> How the hell am I supposed to know a person in a sport I don't even watch? And then you're going to huff and puff at me because I don't know something about something I don't know about? Do you know who Michael Jordan is? Yes. Do you watch basketball? I used to. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. My point exactly. You got a quote from him? I didn't. Just do so. it. Uh, That's Nike. I'm just kidding. But <laughs> the lesson still stands. If you never go after that thing or if you never take the shot, you're guaranteed to miss because you never even attempted it. You have to Facts. at least try. Yeah, that's true. I told myself with the Paragon, no, for years. No, they're going to say no. I don't have enough followers. I'm just a nobody. I'm not good enough. I don't deserve that. All things untrue. Mm -hmm. But they were only true in that moment because that's what I chose to believe. That's the other thing. You have to have an ounce of belief in yourself. There are things, if you are a person who loves to be down on yourself, you know, just as much as I know, that there are things that you've done in your life that are good things. So believe in those things instead of the things that you can't do. And so when we were having this conversation last night about the lack of people that I wanted to be hearing from, I'm not going to focus on them. Instead, I'm going to choose to focus on the people who are saying congratulations mm -hmm. to my win and this huge thing for myself. Because who are your real friends and your real supporters? I also saw a quote last night while we were sitting in the Jeep um, having this conversation. Pay close attention to the people who don't clap when you win. I'm paying attention, all right. 
aside from that, I grew up being bullied, especially by my family. So I have developed a very, very thick skin when it comes to people being not so nice. Mm -hmm. And it's always the people that you think are on your side that do you the dirtiest. And, you know, I've been having to deal with that a lot over the last couple of months too. But I can't allow myself to stoop to a place where I get down on myself or I let that negativity, which is somebody else's inconsistencies, it's somebody else's insecurities. I can't let that stuff weigh on me because I, I know my worth. <laughs> I know what I have to offer and it's not up for a debate. It's not up for me to lessen that, to make somebody else feel good. It's not on me to dim my light because it casts shadows on others. It's not on me to do any of that stuff. And don't do that for other people. If somebody is having an issue because you're winning in life, that's on them. If somebody has an issue because you're more successful in your life, that ain't on you. That's on them. We all have the opportunity to do more, to be better. Are you taking it? Mm -hmm. Are you actually putting in the work? Are you feeling mad? Are you putting in the work or are you faking it? Yeah, pretty much. So the moral of the story is stop believing the story you're telling yourself. It's not true, especially if it's been narrated by people of your past. Mm -hmm. Your past is where it should be. It's behind you. Keep going forward. Keep going forward. And yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good place to kind of leave you. Um, you're leaving me? Yeah, goodbye. Mm. Also, with leaving things behind you, remember, you have to believe in yourself first. Before anybody else believes in you, you have to first. And that is something else that nobody else can take away from you, is the belief that you have in yourself. I know I'm going to do big things. It's not a question. It's a fact. Because I've made a decision. I chose to have that belief in myself and I'm doing the work every single day to be a better version of myself. But with that, you have to accept who you are today, right now, while you're on your way to be a better person tomorrow. Self-acceptance is a real thing and you have to have it. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. He ain't perfect. Nobody is. No matter how hard they try, no matter how aesthetic their Instagram feed, no matter how positive they show up every single day, we all are not perfect. Accept it. Swallow that pill. Yeah. Okay. Don't forget, come join the conversation. Drop some comments down. Ask some questions. What are your thoughts on today's conversation? What limiting beliefs are you telling yourself? How are you going to flip that script? Come find us on social media, Nikki.Bunting, on TikTok and Instagram. Come hang out on the blog on the website at NikkiBunting.com. On the way to 100 podcast subscribers and 500 YouTube subscribers. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Love you. Thanks for being here. Appreciate you. And we'll catch you next week. See ya.